Greetings, and bienvenue, Midna crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. The howler has been reported to be a great cat, or dog, or bear-like beast with eyes that glow red from behind a black pelt. The monster stands four feet tall at the shoulder, and some witnesses say the beast has horns. But the one aspect every witness agrees upon is the Ozark Howler's piercing, terrifying cry, described as everything from the bugling of a bull elk, to the laughter of a hyena, more on that later. Many people have dismissed the Ozark Howler as a hoax, a college student's idea of a joke, but Howler sightings stretch back to the early 1800s. A number of residents of Red Oak, Arkansas, reported seeing the Howler in 1846, as well as those in nearby Branson, Missouri, in 1998, and in Jasper, Arkansas, in 2011. Is the Howler a hoax? Witnesses don't think so. A local Arkansas cryptid is the Ozark Howler. In Arkansas folklore, the Howler is a creature said to dwell in the Ozarks. According to tradition, the creature is bear-like in shape with a gray-colored, shaggy coat. In December 2015, the Arkansas television station 40 and 29 News reported that it had received photographs purported to be images of the creature from a viewer. The station contacted the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, who responded that they had heard of no claims of sightings of the creature and said that the images sent to the station were a hoax. However, recorded call records to the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission during the fall of 2014 reveal reported sightings of the beast in Benton County, Arkansas. In October 2014, a recorded emergency call received by the AGFC indicates a motorist nearly collided with an unidentifiable mammal at 9.45 p.m. The recorded phone conversation reveals that armed state wildlife officers were immediately dispatched to investigate the bear-sized, gray, fast-running animal on Pump Station Road in Springdale. Some people believe that it could be a legend way older. Scottish, Irish, Welsh and English settlers homesteaded the Ozarks Plateau in the mid to late 1800s, and they brought with them their ancestral stories and mythologies. One such story was of the Ku Sith, a mythological hound that is feared as a harbinger of death. The settlers believed the hound would come to bear away the soul of a person to the afterlife, similar to the Grim Reaper. The hounds of death went by other names, such as Bean Sidhi, Irish, Ku Sidhi, Irish, and Cone Anone, Welsh. My personal encounter with the Ozark Howler. I'm not a fucking storyteller so don't expect to get immersed. This isn't a fucking creepy pasta. This is my account of a failed hunting trip with my uncle. Be December of last year. Be me, 18, 275 pounds, aspiring powerlifter, heavy looking, not quite fat. My uncle had a kid a year ago so he hasn't been working out in that time, he is still strong as fuck he just has a gut from all that downtime. This guy is my fucking hero. Knows things about the woods that the gods must have taught him. Me and my uncle are staying with family in Mountain Home, Arkansas. Never been hunting out here. Pretty excited. Supposed to be elk out here. Don't have an elk tag but fuck the game wardens. Get up at 3 a.m. to drive out as far as we can, walk about 15 miles into the mountains. So deep that the mountains block cell signals. I'm equipped with my SKS, pick related I didn't have one of just my SKS, uncle has his Mosin. My uncle helps me get situated in my deer stand because he's already killed a deer this season and he wants me to kill one. End up so well situated that you would never find me if I didn't shine my phone light at you. Sit in freezing temperatures all day and see jack shit. Uncle told me to wait for him to come get me from my blind. Starts getting dark. Okay uncle Anon you can hurry up. 
Now. He finally gets there and I'm already noped the fuck out. Round in the chamber, finger on the trigger because fuck trigger control. He is noped out as well. He says something was following him there from his climbing stand. As soon as he gets there this weird smell fills the air. Think rotting meat mixed with fresh cut pomegranate. We still have a 3 hour walk ahead of us. Fuck dot bmg. We start walking, smelling that weird smell the entire time. Starting to get used to it, my first mistake. About an hour in, we hear this loud ass howl that makes us immediately train our guns in that direction. Think of the noise a severely artistic gorilla would make if it was shot three times in the gut. We've been walking for a while so our eyes are pretty much used to the darkness by now. We can't see shit but we are 1000% ready to shoot something. We say fuck it and start jogging back. We've been smelling this shit for the last hour. About 30 minutes go by. We hear the noise again. Cry of the artists. W-E-B-M. Fuck conserving my flashlight's batteries I wanna see what this thing is. I get out my pocket lead flashlight. Turn it on and grab the front of my SKS with that same hand and point my gun along with the flashlight at the area the noise came from. I really don't like describing this thing, I don't even like remembering it. I'm no ped the fuck just sitting here on my phone just remembering this shit. The image of the howler is burned into my memory doubt I will ever forget it. It was less than 15 yards away. It was a grizzly bear sized cat standing on all fours about five feet tall at the shoulders with fucking horns like a goddamn mountain ram or some shit shaggy ass dark hair it had green eyes that are burned into my memory especially it made the noise again and jumped at me and my uncle we were so fucking noped after it howled at us that as soon as it even twitched at us i dumped my fucking mag into it and uncle anon was firing and racking the slide on his nugget as fast as he could I don't know if we killed it because I didn't stick around for it. If we didn't kill it then it seriously shouldn't exist. Me and my uncle sprint all the way back to his truck and book it the fuck out of those woods. I still have 6 deer tags to fill and I don't know if I'll ever hunt again. My uncle sold his truck because of associated memories. He now drives a Chevy Sonic. If I can't get psychiatric help I won't make it through the year live in the ozarks ozark howler be driving in arkansas hills on a motorcycle going about 30 around tight bends bike had screaming eagle exhaust it's loud k hear cracking of branches and a fucking few rocks slide off the slope about 200 feet ahead stop fast enough to not die clean up rocks Hear slash feel gurgling choking sounds bouncing off the hills. Jumped back on my bike. Car passes going around 50 where I was cleaning the rocks. They would have never have seen me in time to stop. I'm positive I would have been hit if it wasn't for that sound. After living in northwest Arkansas for over 10 years, the scariest thing to me is the crazies and rednecks that hold themselves up in the woods completely detached from society. Me and my best friend in high school used to just go look for paranormal stuff and the spookiest thing that ever happened was one night during a full moon and we went walking down my driveway, a mile long dirt road lots of people lived on, and got followed by some weirdo that was mumbling to himself I'd never even seen before that I'm pretty sure was going to kill us had we not been able to sneak a call for my mom to come get us. The minute car lights were on him he dashed off into the woods. Still creeps me out. There's a lot of Bigfoot stories in Arkansas. There's a lot of oral history in Arkansas that will never be written down. You almost never hear stories about KGC anymore because the history was never written down, just told to sons and friends. In the 1800s there were a lot of gold prospectors that worked in Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas was a crime-ridden place full of miners and gold prospectors amidst the farmers and regular folk. Where Beaver Lake sits was a river valley full of gold. 
I've heard stories of entire natural caves filled with tons and tons and tons of gold, dirt, rock sediment coming in off the White River. I've walked through the holler where my grandparents lived and seen a gold nugget in the creek. Seen natural caves big enough for a possum to walk through where water once flowed out of the mountain with KGC carved into the inside where someone once crawled on their belly to reach. Albert Pike fought on the Confederate side in the Civil War because there is gold in Arkansas. He was protecting the interests of the bank he partially owned. He lived in Little Rock after the war ended. He was the go-to guy if you wanted to sell your gold. People owed their lives to Albert Pike, and made sure that everyone selling gold sold it to him only. No one was allowed to buy gold in Arkansas without Albert Pike knowing. I've also heard stories about Beaver Lake. About the gold that collects at the bottom of the dam. Those mines were still being worked when they flooded everything out. I can imagine the old men who never wanted too much. They knew there'd be gold down in the ground for generations to come until they flooded out all the caves. I grew up in Arkansas, in the northern part, mountain home, and we have tons of lakes and deep woods. I've had an encounter with something, I don't know if it was Sasquatch, that changed my outlook on the subject. Be 4th of July, be out on a boat on the lake with my family. Probably 10 of us on the boat. Go to a secluded area where no one is. It's around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. The moon is so bright there's no need for lights. We're all laughing, some are drinking, and just having a good time. Suddenly we all hear huge crashing. Sounds like huge trees are snapping. We look over onto the bank, roughly 50 yards away, and see huge splashing. The tree line is almost pushed up to the edge of the water, no way this was a camping area or anything. See huge boulders being thrown from the tree line into the water. These are no small rocks, had to have been 200 pounds easily. This goes on for roughly 5 minutes, probably 6 rocks thrown in total. We end up leaving because it was spoopy as fuck. The ground was level so it wasn't as if these boulders were rolling off a hill into the water. The boulders actually had projection to them as if something was throwing them out into the water. My father was raised in some holler outside Pine Bluff. A few times I joined him for family reunions in the Ozarks which were pretty raucous and rednecky, complete with shine form family stills. They'd play penny poker into the wee hours telling stories and fighting. I wasn't crazy about them, they're very rough and tumble people, his family. One thing I loved was eavesdropping on the stories at the poker table. Holy shit, Arkansas is scary. The mundane stories of family and holler rivalries, shiner wars and local psychopaths are scary as it is but as the nights got later the stories inevitably turned to things like Bigfoot, Panthers, hauntings, a mysterious prowler who lived in the woods and would run the rooftops of the ramshackle houses in their holler. They'd all taken shots at the shadow man with their 410s and shotguns and whatnot, none ever able to hit him. There were stories of a clandestine group meeting in the woods, which was remarkable being that they weren't the clan and no one knew who they were, presumably a satanic cult. And then there was perhaps the strangest and creepiest of stories. I shit you not, these were stories even the local kids and young cousins would confirm. Most of them had seen in the woods near some sort of plant or factory a clown that held balloons, sometimes even in broad daylight. This could have the most banal explanation and sound so laughably cliché but it was no less terrifying. It's been 20 years since I've even visited this side of the family so I don't know if anyone else will recognize these old tales but I used to stay up late as a child and eavesdrop on these stories told around the penny poker table and they'd spook me like nothing else. Been Little Rock raised since 92. It was a miserable life where I can't walk outside without some irrational fear. But there are planes usually flying overhead all the time loud as fuck, at about 3 in the morning. 
Lately I've been seeing a lot of reports and other threads from Anons located elsewhere on 3am being a usual time for weird shit. Ever since researching into occult secret societies and whatnot earlier this year, I've had heightened awareness of orbs and connections to what might be slightly disturbing me at my house. Here's a story of one night when I woke up out of sleepwalking. Like, no, what the fuck, stage 3 sleep, slow wave, when we sleepwalk the most, and yet I wake the shit up out of it. Sleepwalk very rarely, times I do are short distances and mostly unnoticed by me. Paranoia's been building up lately on research in certain subjects. One night, sleepwalking around my room. Odd due to me being in my room of all places. Snap awake from sleepwalking. Stumbled on an empty plastic bin and broke a part of it. Ankle a sore and this is what I figured brought me to consciousness. Wake up screaming. Witness a big figure in front of me in the hallway outside my room. Completely black. Covered in shadows. Can't recall if it even had red eyes or not. Seemed to have wings as well. I don't know if it's still something I'm writing out to rehash the experience. Darts away and as it does I hit sleep paralysis. Fucking jump out of it to my bed so I don't collapse on myself from standing. Parts of my body are still asleep. Sleep paralysis is hitting my leg with numbness and mad tingles all up and down it. Curl up in bed completely shaken. Still not even sure what it was, but that's been the scariest instance of my life. Alright, this is a long story so I'm not gonna green text it. I'm from Arkansas so I'm somewhat of an outdoors man, and I don't drink or do drugs, especially when hunting. It was two years ago, where I live gun season starts mid-November and that's when it gets on average 34 degrees degrees Fahrenheit and I was getting up every weekend at around 4.30 in the morning because the drive to my farm is around an hour to an hour and a half. So I'm packed and I'm heading down to the farm and it was a pretty uneventful drive as per usual. I had gotten to the dirt road and turned off on it. I had to slow down because the shocks on my truck are terrible and when I would go down the road I would bump around like crazy. Being a creepy story junkie I am somewhat paranoid when I'm alone in the woods or just driving around in the dark, it's very wooded here. I'm around 15 minutes into the dirt road part of the drive and I'm rounding a bend and there was a deer laying gutted in the road, oh shit dot jpg. I had to maneuver around the body because I'm not getting out to check a dead deer in bear country, and I kept going. I drive past it and looked back in the mirror and I see a black heap come out from the woods when I'm a ways away. A bear, I knew it, I told myself. I kept driving and got to the main gate to my property, when I stepped out of my truck I just felt weird, not like, oh there is something watching me, type feeling, it was just, felt like I was in a Thanksgiving family argument, I felt stressed and cringed. I closed the gate and drove down through the valley opening to the bend that goes up a large hill and stopped the truck. Pitch black, with only the moon giving me some light, and I know this land like the back of my hand and so it wasn't a big deal. I start walking and I had put some synthetic dough urine on my boots and had a trailer with dough urine attached to leave a trail. I went down the hill and turned right into a small man-made clearing my father and I had made years before as a shooting lane with another trail going up and to the right, I had put a double-seated tree stand there and so I got in it. When I got in the stand I put my bag on a hook that I had drilled into the tree, and I settled in. I sat in the stand for an hour, probably till around 5.30 and I decided to rattle for a buck, and using my grunt call. I did this for like 10 minutes, making sure that if any bucks were around I made sure they heard it, and after a few minutes it worked. I heard the crunching of leaves heading towards my direction, it was still pitch black besides a few beams of dim light from the moon and I was sitting there, 15 feet in the air listening to a big buck walking near me. My excitement was unreal, I had never had a buck react this close and this fast before and I was fumbling silently with my rifle, 
I had it in my lap and I was kinda shivering with excitement. The buck is getting closer, so close I can hear it panting oh boy dot x, and I kinda see movement in the darkness. And I see a large rack pass through the dim moonbeam. It stops and is panting, I can hear it shifting around. I can't see shit but I can hear it, I lean forward to try and see it, I see a shape down below my stand, I can see its rack, but really nothing else. I hear it about to walk around the tree I was sitting against and I saw it pass by the tree with the moonbeam. It was a large humanoid, I'm Native American. So I immediately knew it was a wendigo. Its bony clawed hand scrapped across the tree and its elongated human looking foot passed by the tree afterward. I'm silently shitting myself, my point three zero eight could hurt it but I've never really encountered a wendigo before and had only heard stories from people in the internet. I can hear it get further and further away, getting to the top of the hill. I'm sitting in the stand with my back against the tree, just listening to this thing walk by me. I suddenly get the urge to look around the tree to see if I can see anything of it, immediately regret it. It's standing on the hill looking at me, picture related. At this point, I was just as just getting ready to die. But for some reason, almost as if my arms were on autopilot, I raised my rifle and aimed for its forehead, and pulled the trigger. Didn't even flinch. Just standing there looking at me with glowing eyes, and that's when it turned and walked down the hill with a huge hole in between its eyes. I sat there for hours afterward, just waiting to get attacked and mauled to death, of course. Nothing happened so I got down and ran back to my truck and got the fuck out of there. On the way out I looked back to the hill from the gate and I saw it standing there, watching me leave. Never will go back, I'm shaking after typing this. If you have any questions feel free to ask. Thanks for reading my ramblings. Please help. I don't know if this has happened to anyone else, but I still can't believe what happened to me. I don't know if this is even paranormal but holy shit. This past week I've been spending in the Springfield area because I'm on break from school. My parents want me to come with them to our cousin's house, they live in northern Arkansas, not too far away. I like my cousins but who I really like is their dog Lysander. Big fluffy Malamute slash husky mix, one of the prettiest dogs I've ever seen. He's always so excited to see me. Second day I'm there yesterday, I decide to go for a hike with him. Uncle wants me to take a gun in case I run into a crazy, but I'm from Illinois suburbs and have never shot one in my life. Tell him I'll be fine, I'm a big girl now and Lysa will protect me. He agrees but tells me to stay on the trail. I drive out to a trailhead I found online. Beautiful mountainous region. This is northern Arkansas so it's below freezing but totally manageable. The snow is just brushing the ground. I'm walking at a great pace, air is fresh, throwing sticks for Lyso. The trees are getting thicker, I know I'm never going to break a tree lean or anything because these aren't big mountains. Brush is so thick that a lot of this ground doesn't really have snow, lots of exposed roots, shadows, rocky boulders in the stream beds and such. It's pretty quiet except for a few birds. Lyso is jumping around, so happy. Suddenly he freezes. Stops and sniffs the air. I can tell he's got something on his nose. He seems a little paralyzed. I suddenly feel nervous even though I try to brush it off as normal, I mean, he's a dog. He looks confused, starts patting around but is super alert. Then his ears perk up, and a low growl starts in his throat. I stand behind him. What is it buddy? His back arches like a cat and he stands in front of me, still softly growling. I've never seen him do this before. I can literally see his flight or fight reaction working. Flight wins out. He turns and starts to nudge me into the brush off trail. I trust him so I follow, I'm generally scared now. Crazy hill people fears and whatnot. He's not growling anymore but looks confused and alert again, and leads me into a little hollow a ways up the hill from the trail. There he starts to scan the landscape, and that's when I see it. 
I crouched down, scared out of my mind, but peering through the branches in front of me. It's a bear, a really huge one, lumbering through the woods. I know I am probably not in danger because bears don't usually attack humans, but this one is huge. I didn't even know bears were in this area. I'm cursing myself for not bringing that gun. Then I start to notice that the bear is walking funny. It's still a ways off and the branches are hiding it, but it looks like it's swaying from side to side with each step, as if it's drunk or is dragging something. Like its arms are too long for its legs. When it gets closer I see that it's definitely not a bear. At least not a normal one. The forearms look way more like human proportions, and its fur looks more like a buffalo or mountain goat of something. Although its back looks like a bear its neck is longer. And it has a tail. Never seen a bear with a tail. It's kinda wagging too, sweeping back and forth. Lyso is dead silent, still on alert, but clearly just as scared as I am. The bear thing is rummaging around, getting closer, but for something that big and ungraceful it's really quiet. Like, it definitely should be making more noise. Lyso starts to move and I grab him by the collar and put an arm around him, begging him to keep quiet. Too late. He barks, really loud, mean one, and the bear thing looks up quickly. I can't even describe the face. It's like this fat, furry bear slash moose hybrid, small eyes, weird lip things. It has these small ears, and they shoot up as it's looking up the hill right at me. I'm still holding Lyso, and I'm starting to pray at this point. Then the bear thing slowly starts to stand up. My heart skips a beat. It's way bigger than I thought it was. And its arms are so terrifyingly long for its body. I let go of Lyso, he bolts down the hill, teeth bearing and barking like crazy. The thing looks confused and scared and turns around, starts to hightail it back the way it came. It's running this weird long-armed bear gallop, breaking branches but still with super quiet footsteps. I run down the hill after it as Lysa chases it away. Thirty seconds later he comes back and licks my hand, I'm totally shaken. We get back on the trail and head back to my car. What the hell was that? When I got home my family believed me, but I had a hard time explaining it. My dad and uncle think that it was a bear with some kind of severe deformity, like a growth hormone gene gone wrong and fucking up its bone structure. They said there's a few bears in those mountain and maybe inbreeding mess that one up, but its face was definitely not a normal animal. I honestly think I saw Bigfoot or maybe whatever people think is Bigfoot, when it stood up on its hind legs its silhouette could definitely pass for a furry primate and holy shit it was huge. This is literally my first time even posting on slash x slash, but since I knew 4chan I came here. Be a year ago. Girlfriend and I finally get a weekend together. Decide to go to a hotel not too far away. She likes old Victorian shit. Look up Victorian hotels in Victorian town, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Find Crescent Hotel website. Looks Victorian enough and make reservations. Find out it has a reputation of being haunted. On top 10 lists on the interwebs. Read stories, spooked but excited but spooked. Arrive, drink, ghost tour. Our room is on the same floor some ghostly shit happens. It's nurse pushing a squeaky gurney in the middle of the night. Anyway. Drink more, fuck, asleep at 12. 3 a.m. Eyes wide open. Wide awake. Perfectly quiet. Daydream for an hour and fall back asleep. Next day, drink, fuck, asleep. 3 a.m. Eyes wide open. Confused and spooked. I've never experienced that before. I'm usually a heavy sleeper. It usually takes something significant to wake me up. I've heard it referred to as the devil's hour. Crescent Hotel, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Since its construction in 1886, the Crescent Hotel has served several purposes, luxury resort, conservatory for young women, junior college. 
but the strangest mark on its resume came in 1937 when it got a new owner, Norman G. Baker. Baker was a millionaire inventor who decided to pose as a doctor, despite having no medical training, and turn the hotel into a hospital that could cure cancer. He was eventually found out and run out of town. Although reports say that his spirit found its way back to the site, and it's not alone. The Crescent Hotel, which has returned to a working hotel today, is said to be haunted by at least eight ghosts, from a five-year-old girl to a bearded man wearing Victorian clothing. Be a few minutes ago, going out for smoke. For reference, I live in rural Arkansas, very close to Oklahoma. Woods everywhere. Get out to my car and get my smokes. Hear rustling in the bushes, but like I said it's rural Arkansas, there's literally a hundred things it could be that aren't out of the ordinary. But animals don't usually get close to the house except for the occasional raccoon. Dogs around the neighborhood start barking. Smoking, kinda worried it might be a stray dog or coyote, or maybe a bear. Feel reassured my .357 Magnum is right inside the house though. All of a sudden it sounds like an owl is hooting, but making a song. Kinda sounds like that tune that Tate whistled on American Horror Story Season 1. Go around the house to check it out and nothing is there. Fucking owls. Then a few seconds later, I hear talking, but the voice is weird. Like when dogs sound like they're talking. It's almost in a growl or bark, but kinda high-pitched. Notice the wind has stopped and all the dogs around are silent. Nope the fuck back inside, gripping my revolver, trying to brush off what happened as something logical. Sipping bourbon, trying to take the edge off. What the fuck just happened? I see all kinds of crazy shit in the woods, the wildlife and whatnot, but this had me so uneasy. Sorry if you guys don't find this one particularly scary but it's based off a childhood memory. It was hard for a kid like me to fit into the environment where I was raised. My family had its share of rednecks but it wasn't until we moved in with our grandparents that I realized what white trash really was. They lived in a cheap trailer park down in Arkansas. It's all we could afford. Mom lost her job drinking at work and my grandparents were knee-deep in medical bills. I had no choice but to live with them being that I was only 11 years old at the time. I made no friends and hardly got along with my family so most of my time was spent alone playing games or getting lost in the woods. I'd go out in the forest down the road every weekend and explore every inch of it I could before dark. I found many interesting things like the ruins of an old abandoned construction site and plenty of run-down homes. But my favorite place to go to was always the creek. My mother was working late that night and my grandparents were having an awful fight. I didn't want any part of it, so I grabbed a sandwich, stuffed it in a paper sack and decided I was going to eat lunch on my own today. So, I walked out that door and headed towards my usual spot down by the creek. It wasn't too far, just had to go down the road and it was right behind an old vacant trailer house. People up the street said it was haunted, but I didn't believe it. I always felt safe there. I'd walk up to its porch and peer through the window and see if anything were inside. It was always empty, until today that is. I looked inside the window on the balcony that overlooked the creek. In the far corner of the room was an old wheelchair facing the wall and some broken glass on the floor. None of the windows had been broken and the chair didn't look like any wheelchair I'd ever seen. Being the kid, I was I just assumed someone broke in, smashed a bottle and left their wheelchair. I didn't give it much thought and decided to just head down to the creek. There were frogs to be caught and a sandwich to be eaten. I ate my lunch right away and set off deeper into the woods by the creek. I was going to go as far as my legs could take me. Deeper and deeper into the forest the trees started getting thicker and taller until they almost blotted out the sky. 
The ground was covered in pine needles and decaying leaves. I kept going and going until I saw a light between the trees, like something out of a Disney movie. A beam of light shone through the thick canopy, revealing a soft, mossy patch of grass. I was exhausted. I'd walked for hours and feeling the warmth of the sun's rays made me feel comfortable. Stomach full and legs aching, my young body could take no more and I had lain down on that soft patch of earth. I listened to the sound of the water from the creek nearby and to the birds chirping above the trees. Before I knew it, I had fallen asleep. Maybe I was just a dumb kid. I didn't think anything could go wrong if I took a quick nap outside deep in those woods. But boy was I wrong. I hadn't gotten much sleep the night before. I slept in the laundry room sharing a bunk bed with my older brother. It wasn't comfortable in the least bit and the room was always cold. My brother kept me up all night watching a Dragon Ball Z marathon that went on all day and night. I'm a very light sleeper so any sudden noise can completely ruin my sleep and let me tell ya. Dragon Ball Z is very noisy. It's no wonder I fell asleep so easily out there. The sound of glass breaking woke me up. I opened my eyes but couldn't move my body. All I could do was look around and see visions of my family sitting on the sofa with huge holes in their chests trying to push back in their viscera. I could see their lungs expanding and their hearts beating through the cavity in their chest. They were completely silent as they moved their lips as if trying to speak. Each one of them staring down at me as they slowly bled to death. I couldn't move a muscle or make a sound as I watched them all drop to the floor. I wanted more than anything to run away and cry. I was forced to watch my whole family bleed out right in front of me. Somehow, during all this, a leaf made its way into my mouth. That's when I really started to panic. I sprung up from my sleep and spat the leaf out of my mouth. I realized immediately that I was in deep shit. The sun had gone down and the woods were pitch black. I was all alone in that dark forest. I was terrified. I began crying as I made my way towards the creek by ear. I'm not sure if it was my young mind playing tricks on me, but I swear I was being watched. Eyes watching me, snickering, as I fumbled through the dark. I could see again once I reached the creek, but my legs were aching from all the walking. I couldn't find the energy to run but I had to keep following that goddamn creek. I fell over countless times scraping my knees and cutting my hands on rocks. Every time I felt more and more embarrassed as if people were watching me, making fun of me in the dark. I was too afraid to stop. Hours must have gone by before I finally found the trailer at the end of my road. This was it. The final stretch. I was relieved but I couldn't help shaking the thought of being watched. I always looked behind me but never saw a thing and it only scared me more. I practically crawled up the hill and made my way onto the balcony of the trailer that overlooked the creek. I looked down and saw nothing, but I wasn't scared this time. I was finally out of the woods. I was safe. I sat on that balcony rubbing my sore feet and wiping the tears from my eyes. After I finished cleaning the mud off my hands, I tilted my head back and tried to get some rest before I went home. As I looked up, I saw something at the window in front of me. In that moment all the terror I felt waking up and walking out of those woods returned to me and I had no idea why. My heart began to race. I stood up a bit more to see what was at the window. I knew exactly what it was. It was the old wheelchair from before but pulled up right against the window. I quickly stood up and got a clear view of the room. Eyes were definitely looking back at me from that chair as I finally got a good look at it. The chair had leather straps on the arms and legs and a piss-soaked padding on the seat. I could see even more glass scattered across the floor and footprints going in circles in the far corner of the room. I couldn't seem look away from that wheelchair. Next thing I knew I was sprinting down the road to my house. Never again did I stop by that house or go that deep into those woods. 
Of course, that never stopped me from finding other scary shit around that trailer park. But that's a story for another time. Story from my earlier years growing up in Paragould. Be me. Being 12. Go out in woods down the street from house. Go all the time with brother. Usually go out and play army with each other and generally just shoot random shit with BB guns and pellet guns. This time go decked full out with brand new guns, army battle dress uniforms, hunting gear, and various spy shit I got for my birthday. Ass so bad it got 8 consecutive life sentences. Spend couple hours shooting at fridges and washers slash various shit we found in the creek. As we walk down the creek we notice a trail we haven't seen before. Shit starts out of nowhere and, and is too big to be some deer trail. We dare each other to follow it, neither one wants to go first. After a while he offers to trade guns with me if I go down it first. Fuck your dot jpg. Swap guns and triumphantly march down trail while he follows. Strut in that shit dot gif. After a while we see some a bunch of random garments nailed into a tree 8 feet off the ground. We shoot at them a little because we fucking own this shit. Managed to shoot a scrap of a shirt down. Edges of it ripped the fuck up plus the holes from the guns. We sorta of poke at it for a while. It doesn't really bother us, we figure it had just been out there for a while. Continue walking down the trail, not really worried about getting lost since we just gotta walk back up the trail and walk back down the creek bed to get home. After a little while of walking we come upon a shitty old wooden shack about 7 foot by 10 foot. Rusty padlock. Busted windows, lots of growth, probably hadn't been opened or touched in years. We try fiddling around with the door, but the padlock is still holding it shut. See the wood on it rotting and get a great idea. Bust the wood next to the padlock with the butt of the gun and proceed to kick the door open like a total badass. Go through door, scanning the room with the BB gun, prepared to bring mild discomfort to anything there. Can't see shit captain.jpg. My little brother puts on his spy gear night vision goggles and hands me a flashlight. He begins to talk shit about my rinky dink flashlight. I hush him so I can look around and also because I feel spooked out. A fuck ton of folded clothes that were probably white once. Animals came in and shit on them slash moved some around. On the other side of the shed is a workbench. Bunch of rusty tools and shit scattered around. Bunch of nails everywhere. Literally hundreds of nails all over the walls. Get skeeved the fuck out. Right as I'm about to tell my brother to get the fuck out of here we both freeze. Here leaves rustling outside. Footsteps. Oh god I'm gonna fucking die. Neither of us are breathing. We stand there for a solid three minutes without moving a muscle. Rustling sounds like it's all around the shed as if it's right next to the walls. We can see the trees outside the window above us and there is zero wind. Rustling gets harder and faster and then stops. We wait a minute and then run the fuck out of there. As we run we hear the rustling again. Sound is fucking everywhere. It sounds like it's loudest behind us. We get back to the creek and jump down into the bed. Run as fast as humanly fucking possible down the creek bed and back to the road. By the time we get back it's well after dark. Never go back again. When I was 16 I worked in Arkansas with my cousin and his grandfather. We tore down shacks abandoned by the mountain people as the town expanded. State workers showed up putting in power lines to run wire to new parts of town. So they split deeper into the hills. They came down easy. They stunk like years of body sweat, feet, and ass. You had to spray yourself with an entire can of cutter to keep the flies at bay. Full of lice, just horrible. However it was the state contracted so the pay was tits. Finished tearing down and burning up the shack next to the river. His grandmother comes and docks on the bank down from the house. We give her the truck keys and we three jump in the boat for a night of fishing. We powered up the river deeper in the hills. We wanted to spot the next house to be removed Monday. We went 20 minutes up river and found it back up on the hill in a clearing. We pulled up the motor and started floating downstream, bait casting for whatever would bite. The sky was late in the day. No glare on the water was great for casting in the sweet spots. 
I turned and looked down river to cast and noticed a man floating face down and naked ahead of us. I hollered at Pat, my cousin's grandfather. He turned and looked at the man then dropped the motor in the water and started it up. I reeled in my line and set my pole aside. I prepared myself on the side of the boat to grab the guy when we got close to him. We didn't though. Pat throttled the boat up and swayed out and passed him. I looked at my cousin in disbelief. My cousin pointed out to the river in front of us. Here comes another one. A woman this time naked and face down in the water. We powered past her as well, watching her bob in the wake as we sped past. One more body in the water goes by. Shit is getting too serious for me. We move fast down the river, see a fishing boat ahead. We slow down across from it. Pat yells to see if anyone is in it. No reply. Pat pulled out his notebook and wrote down the boat ID. Numbers. He hollered one more time. I hear a bump on the side of our boat. I look over to the side and see another body. I told Pat he dropped the motor again and cranked it over. Then that fucking man jumped up and grabbed the side of the fucking boat. I freaked out. He had a knife in his mouth covered by a long wet beard. He tried to pull himself into the boat. Pat stomped his head over and over it seemed like. He let go and Pat jumped to the back of the boat and gunned it. We ran full throttle all the way back to his dock on the river. An hour and a half trip in 40 minutes. We docked and walked up to the house. Pat called the cops and a county deputy came out to the house. We explained to him what happened and gave him the boat ID that Pat wrote down. Saturday morning the deputy comes back out to the house. The boat from yesterday was owned by a Missouri reported missing that morning. We went over everything with the deputy again. Told him how far up the river we traveled. He left called Pat again later that night and never heard any more about it. Monday we head out to the road to the next house. One of Pat's friends is clearing trees for powerline poles. He talks about the police being up there looking into the missing person. The guy tells us the county sheriff was talking about an old story he heard from his grandparents' friends. The people on these hills were floating naked on the river waiting for someone to check on them. When they did check, they would be pulled over, stabbed and dragged to shore into the hills. They would do this to scare people away from their area. It worked too, cause we turned around and went home. It is to this day the scariest thing I have experienced. I told my girlfriend this story a couple weeks ago for the first time and I wanted to share it with the Midnight Crew. I never knew where this story would fit in but it happened in Arkansas so here we go. Be me. Go on hunting trip with dad and grandpa to Arkansas. Stay in the Hampton Hotel in Blytheville with the Chinese buffet place attached to it if anyone knows where that's at. Gotta go to sleep early to wake up at the ass crack of dawn to go hunting. I've drank and smoked plenty by this point in my life but I was stone sober when I went to sleep that night. I had a dream. I was a boy around 7 or 9. I was alone wandering through what looked like a countryside. Nobody was with me and I knew no one was going to be with me. Something terrible happened but I didn't know exactly what. There were holes in the ground that looked like they came from explosions and a lot of the buildings I saw had major damage to them. The next scene, I remember I was still in the countryside. In front of me lay a long road and either side of the road was lined with animal carcasses. Mostly cattle and some horses rotting along the road. I was on this road for a long time and I hadn't eaten in a very long time. I was very desperate. I picked a cow along the way and ate some of the rotting flesh because it was the only thing there was to eat. Next I found myself in a city. It was quiet. I remember feeling excited to find the city but reluctant because it could be dangerous. I had to be a ghost. I crept through the buildings. Out of nowhere the city lit up and I was caught up in a large battle. I found myself with two men wearing green military uniforms inside of a heavily damaged building. I was incredibly happy and relieved because I was going to be safe if I followed them. 
From one of the doorways a small burst of gunfire cut down the two men near me. Another man walked in and his gaze was trained on me. He walked up to me and he didn't say a word. He didn't have to. His eyes showed nothing but pure hatred for me and the slow grin creeping across his face was telling me that he was going to kill me and he was going to revel watching the life slowly drain out of me. Everything else happening around me seemed to phase completely out as all I felt was that man's absolute disdain for me. An explosion happened separating the man and I I jumped up and reached for a gun laying next to me. I racked it as quickly as I could as I aimed at the man that was going to kill me. He was aiming at me when I pulled the trigger. I shot up completely soaked in sweat and gasping for air. I was confused as to where I was as well as who I was. I was up an hour before my alarm and decided there was no way I could go back to sleep. I got dressed and went to go get coffee from the lobby. I felt mentally and emotionally drained. It felt more like reliving a memory than a dream. I recognized the two men that were trying to help me as American World War II soldiers and I recognized the gun that I picked up as a Thompson submachine gun. I have no idea what room it was and I have no idea if anyone died in that hotel but I know that somehow something wanted me to see and experience that. The Arkansas snipe or skeeteroo is a fearsome critter in the form of a giant insect. The legend tells that a lumberjack was lost in Arkansas. He went up a hill to orient himself. When he came back, the horse wasn't there, two Arkansas snipes ate the horse, chomped the saddle and spat the horseshoes. In another version, the giant insects devour a cow and brush their teeth with the cow's horns. An American salesman and him searched for a man named Don Yall. The two men started walking around the swamp. Soon, they heard the bell of a cow and walked to see the cow. When they arrived, they saw a dead cow with a mosquito standing on two feet on it shaking the bell to call the other cows and make them arrive to their fate. The mosquitoes looked more like raccoons, because they had claws that if they kicked a cow, they would pierce the heart of the cow. And there's also the story of Bill Jenkins, the largest man from Arkansas, who got up one night and two mosquitoes grabbed him and carried him with them. The mosquitoes started to talk if they should hide him in the swamp, but decided not to hide him in the swamp because bigger mosquitoes would steal their prey. There's also a story that tells that a man hid two mosquitoes under a cauldron, so they started to make holes in the cauldron to escape. The man pulled away their prickles so they won't escape, but the mosquitoes flied away with the cauldron and the human. Arkansas Gauro is a giant lizard, said to live in caves of Arkansas, Boone and Searcy counties, northern Arkansas. It has two tusks on its head and is 20 feet in length. It makes an assortment of groans and hisses. Sometime before 1935, E. J. Rhodes heard a commotion in a deep cavern called Devil's Hole, three miles northwest of Myrtle, Arkansas. He crawled down 200 feet to investigate, but couldn't see anything. Later, when he lowered a flat iron on a rope into the cavern, something bit through the rope. The Gauro, one of several fabulous monsters reported in Arkansas popular lore, may owe its origins more to journalism than to traditional narrative and folk belief. The principal documentation of the creature's existence is a story that appeared in the Arkansas Gazette on January 31, 1897, apparently written by Elbert Smithy. Elmer Burris provided an illustration, allegedly based on a photograph, to accompany the piece. Fred W. Alsop, who edited the Gazette at the time, recounted the circumstances that led to Smithy's story. William Miller, a Little Rock businessman who had been traveling in the Ozarks of northwest Arkansas, told Smithy of a horrible monster known as the Gauro. Its name came from the noise it made during its nocturnal depredations. The creature had been slaughtering livestock and pets near Blanco, Searcy County, in Calf Creek Township. Miller formed a posse that tracked the Gauro to its lair, a cave littered with animal skeletons and even some human remains. As they waited to ambush the monster, they heard it emerge from a nearby lake, causing the earth to tremble as it made its way toward them. The Gauro perished after several volleys from the posse. Before its death, it ripped up several trees and tore off the leg of one of the posse members. 
An examination of the remains revealed a creature 20 feet in length with two tusks, large webbed feet ending in claws, a row of short horns along its back, and a long thin tail with a blade on the end. Williams claimed to have sent the body to the Smithsonian Institution, but it never arrived at the Washington, D.C. Museum. Alsop dismissed the account, it was a great fake, probably without foundation in fact. The Ozark research of folklore collector Vance Randolph revealed additional details about the Gauro, which he believed had been reported as early as the 1880s. Randolph's sources suggested that the Gauro was a species of creature rather than an individual monstrosity. The young hatched from soft-shelled eggs as large as beer kegs, and the mother carried newly hatched infants in a pouch. Randolph related a story about an encounter with a gauro by a spelunker exploring Devil's Hole in Boone County. He also told of someone from Mina, Polk County, who claimed to have captured a gauro by inducing the creature to eat so many dried apples that it swelled to a size that prevented its escaping into its burrow. The gauro's captor was exhibiting his catch to anyone who would pay a quarter. Once he had a sufficient audience, the man would stagger from behind a curtain with his clothes in rags announcing that the gauro had escaped. This sent the crowd into a panic without his having to produce an actual gauro. Creatures such as the gauro abound in the folklore of exaggeration that is often associated with the frontier. Though sometimes stories about them may be told as true, more frequently they are tall tales or lies, as some storytellers denominate them. In fact, Randolph presented his material on the Gauro in his collection of tall tales titled We Always Lie to Strangers. I personally live in Arkansas and my favorite urban legend, cryptid as the White River Monster, and there is some history speculated about it. Some believe the White River Monster may have affected the Civil War. The river was used for transportation, and the monster was supposedly responsible for overturning a boat. Sightings of the monster began in 1915. On July 1 of that year, an owner of a plantation near the river saw the monster. He reported it having gray skin and, as wide as a car and three cars long. As the news spread construction of a rope net began, but ended due to lack of money and materials. In the first week of 1937, recreational fishermen noticed that they were finding it hard to land many fish, and the creature was spotted again, and reported to Bramlett Bateman, a nearby plantation owner, who later confirmed the sighting, describing it as having the skin of an elephant, four or five feet wide by twelve feet long, with the face of a catfish. Lolling on the surface of the water, Feeling the creature was a threat to his crops, he intended to blow up the eddy where the creature was spotted with TNT, but area authorities denied necessary permission. A minor media sensation resulted in visitors from across the nation, some bringing cameras, explosives, and a machine gun, and when no more sightings were made, when a plan to capture it with a giant net failed, and when a deep sea diver failed to find the creature, Bateman was thought to have created a hoax, despite over 100 confirmed sightings recorded during the short period of excitement. The White River Monster was sighted again in the summer of 1971. That year, eyewitnesses who encountered the creature described it as the size of a boxcar, with a bone protruding from its forehead. It looked as if the thing was peeling all over, but it was a smooth type of skin or flesh said one, and it made strange noises that sounded like a combination of a cow's moo and a horse's neigh. Other accounts of the White River Monster described three toad tracks, 14 inches, 360 mm, in length, on Towhead Island leading down to the river through a path of bent trees and crushed bushes. In 1973, the Arkansas State Legislature signed into law a bill by State Senator Robert Harvey, creating the White River Monster Refuge along the White River. The area is located between the southern point on the river known as Old Grand Glaze and a northern point on White River known as Rosie. It is illegal to harm the monster inside the refuge. Falk, 
Miller County, is a small town in southwest Arkansas that attracted attention in the early 1970s when a resident of Texarkana, Miller County, reported being attacked by a mysterious creature there. A reporter for the Texarkana Gazette wrote an article about the events, and from that small publication, a legend was born. Falk and its monster became famous and were featured in a 1973 movie. In May 1971, Bobby Ford reported to the Falk constable that he was attacked at his house by a hairy creature that breathed heavily, had red eyes, and moved very fast. Ford said the man-like creature, which was about seven feet tall and three feet across the chest, put its arm around his shoulder and grabbed him. Ford broke free from the creature and ran, reporting that he ran so fast that he did not stop to open the front door but barreled right through it. He was treated at a local hospital for minor scratches and shock. Ford said the being had been around his house for several days and that there were other eyewitnesses, including his brother and a hunting companion. Ford's wife, Elizabeth, claimed that she was asleep in the front room when she saw a hairy arm with claws coming in the window. She also saw the creature's red eyes. On the night of the attack, Ford claimed, he and his hunting companion spotted the creature at the back of Ford's house with the aid of a flashlight. They shot at it and thought they saw it fall. The men started out toward it, but Bobby Ford ran back to the house when the group heard women screaming. Upon Ford's return to the house, he was attacked. The men shot at the creature several more times, but investigators never found blood. The sheriff's department searched the area, and the only things officers found were a set of strange tracks and claw scratches on the Ford's porch. Jim Powell, then a reporter for the Texarkana Gazette and the Texarkana Daily News, and Dave Hall, then director of Texarkana radio station KTFS, went to Ford's place and found a terrified family moving out of the house it had owned less than a week. Powell wrote an article that appeared in the newspaper, outlining the family's alleged sighting and attack. The next day, both the Texarkana Gazette and the Texarkana Daily published the same follow-up story. It contained the first reference to the name, Falk Monster. The Associated Press and United Press International Wire Services transmitted the article to newspapers across the nation. In 1973, the incident was made into a low-budget movie, The Legend of Boggy Creek, which perpetuated the story to an even larger audience. The movie, filmed in Falk, is a pseudo-documentary thriller about the creature and the town, and it stars some of the eyewitnesses and residents of Falk. Reported sightings of the Falk monster date back as far as 1946, when a resident reported to Miller County Sheriff Leslie Greer that she had seen a strange creature near her home. Sightings of a creature have been reported throughout Falk history, but no sighting has been as famous as the one that gained national attention in 1971. Be me. Live in Bumfick Nowheresville, Arkansas. Be in school at the time. Work as a farm hand for my pa. Have to drive and feed cows after school. Be winter. November if I remember correctly. Gets dark quick. Get to biggest farm I need to feed it, at like 7 o'clock. Pitch black gif. Stops truck. Gets out to open the gate. Whistling. Be happy. To myself. Starts to unlock the gate. Opens. Moves in and turns off the truck. Starts pouring grain into buckets. After last bucket, I heard a small sound. Whistling. The shit.jpg. It's really slow, and it's the tune of, don't worry be happy, it sounds like but very off beat. Don't really think much of it. For the next week I keep hearing it, very faintly on the next property over. Idea.x. On the next day I came I planned on whistling a different tune. Sure enough comes back the next day. Whistles like I'm calling a dog. Whistles right back. Kinda having fun with this now. From now on when it whistles at me from across the property I whistle back. One day I decided to go look on the property. Does my routine. Whistles. Kinda hear it on the top of the hill. Walks up there. 
keeps whistling. On the way up I tripped, and when I fell I cursed after busting my knee. And a few yards of walking towards where the whistling had been. Heard myself say the curse a few couple yards above the hill. Wasn't scared but, the sound just didn't compute in my head. Had a feeling I should leave, and did so. Haven't heard the whistling again, but have deemed it the whistler. I'm thinking it could be a mocking bird or something like that, but I can't explain the mimic of what I said. So yeah. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time.